Good to see you today. Let's go back to where we stopped. Let's go back to where we stopped. First Samuel chapter 10. We are beginning from verses 5 today. Chapter 10 from verses 5 today. Chapter 10 from verses 5. I want to emphasize the fact that God doesn't use anything in its original condition. God does not use anybody in their current condition. Anytime God wants to do something with a man's life, he creates an environment that changes your condition, your status, and your view of life. God doesn't use you as raw as you are. If you look at everything and every man that walked with God, God changed them from what they were to what they would do. God always initiates change. Because God will call you not only into an assignment, but he calls you into a status that suits the assignment. All right? For example, some of us, our parents covenanted us to God. Some of us, God has marked you from the word go. God has to allow situations and the demand of his word to change you to suit. The condition of a man that suits Canaan is not the man who came from Egypt. God will put a demand for you to change and suit your intended position. Your cooperation then to the demand of the word of God is important. We said, number one, God's word puts a demand on us to suit the intentions of God. When God wants to do something, look at it this way. Right from redemption, when we give our lives to Christ, you know what happened? It changes us. The Bible says when a man is in Christ Jesus, he's a new creation. The old are passed away, and behold, everything is new. We are given a new identity because there is a you that God is looking for. He looks for fishermen, and he tells them, I want to make you fishers of men. God will never use you in your current status. Write that statement down. God will never use a man in their current status. I also want to emphasize, God will never bless a man in their current status. There is a youth that cannot handle what God wants to do. I also want you to write down, the change of seasons involves the change of the occupants. I want you to write this down. The change of seasons involves the change of the occupants. It can be a rainy season. If you are not a farmer, you will never benefit from the rainy season. Are you with me? While some people are enjoying rain today, some people are complaining of the flood. Because a season does not benefit you by being a season. You know what I'm talking about? There are people who have compounds and they still buy vegetables. And they have empty compounds. Because a season, and I want to emphasize that, seasons don't happen in themselves. When a season comes, it puts a demand on a person. And that's the point number two. The demand of the word of God and the demand of season. But before we go to seasons, we say the word of God puts a demand on several things. Let's go to the book of um, First Samuel. Let's go there. Let's go there, First Samuel, chapter 10. Let's begin from verses 5 today. After that, you will come to the hill of God where the uh, carison of the Philistine is. And when you come there to the city, you will meet a group of prophets coming down from the high place of worship with a harp, tambourine, flute, a lean before them. And they will be prophesying. Now listen to this because I want you to catch what is being said. 
This is a common man. God wants to transform him into a king. But he tells him, I want you to have an encounter with those who occupy the position you want to enter. So I'm not taking you to farmers because you've been a farmer. I, I have to change you. When the word of the Lord comes, we say it number one, it puts a demand on your language. It puts a demand on your language. Let me tell you, friends, there is a language for any desired position. Because a man rules through their tongue. A man occupies through their words. You are as big, as powerful as the territory created by your tongue. Number two, we say it puts a demand on your relationship. If change doesn't change your relationship, then it's not change. So the word of God puts a demand on two things in your life. It puts a demand on your language. Because it's a word of God. It must become your word. Listen. Until you can say what the word says, you cannot get what the word says. You must be groomed. The word of God puts a demand on your language. There is a language for every desired position. And slowly I'm deliberate on that. There is a language. There are things God cannot never say, it, will never say, because he's God. There is a language God cannot speak. If you must walk with God at a certain level, you must adapt to that language. There is a language of God. There is a language of grace. There is a language of anointing. Yes. There is a language of favor. There is a language of wealth. Mm -hmm. Remember the Bible says, life and death is in the power of the tongue. God's word puts a demand on your language. You. Say amen to that. If language doesn't change, the environment will never change. What you hear makes you. What you hear makes your environment. What you say determines your speed. Did you hear what I said? What you hear makes you. What you hear makes your environment. What you say determines your speed. Listen, friends, if we can change what we say, we can improve where we are and accelerate our speed. It doesn't make sense to read the whole Bible and still talk junk. I'm just honest. Hakuna aja ya kusoma Bible msima na lugha yako ibadiliki. Ati nimesoma through the Bible maratatu. Nimekula neno. Niko na Bible study. Naenda breaking camp. Niko lunch hour kila siku. Niko na daily bread. Nimesoma Bible. Niko na audio Bible. Nimesoma vitabu. Na luga haibadiliki. Listen. Everything that was created by the voice of God only responds to the voice of God. If you want their response, learn the language of God. Let me give an, an, a, a, a warning. There is a culture that makes people speak negative for protection. They think it's just a, a voice, but it creates an environment. If you are doing well financially and people borrow money, tell them, I am sorry. My money is engaged. Usiseme uchumi ni mbaya. Na unajua uchumi yako yiko sawa. Because your wealth takes the form of your language. You might not see the effect right now, but the language will have begun. Just say no, my money is engaged. Usiseme niko broke, na unajua hauko broke. Wanamu na nyamasa hivyo? Sema tu, Aiwe sekani kwa sasa. 
Useseme baba niko mbaya. In fact uko na 20 bob. Na uko na 100,000. Listen. Your money hears your mouth. Just say it is not possible. It is not possible. If somebody told you my wife or my husband is disturbing me, don't respond the way Kenyans now want to demonize us. Usiseme hii wanawake unajua, wanaume. You know, don't 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 buy a warfare which is not meant for you. Like I say, those of you who do banking, do you know you can buy somebody's loan? You can go to the bank and inherit somebody's facility. Let me tell you something. Don't buy people's battles. Don't invite people's battles to your house. Your words is a demand to go God's direction. There is one thing about Jesus. He is called the word of God. Everything Jesus said is, I mean, everything Jesus did is not what he was powerful to do. Is what he was. Jesus did not voice words. He was the word. The word became flesh. You can never enjoy the benefit of the word which has never taken room and taken charge of your life. You must become. So when Jesus said he was not making a statement, he was passing a legislation. So the word of God makes a demand on your language. Number two, we said what? It makes a demand on your relationship. Any change changes relationships. If relationships change, then the fellowship must change. If you can't change the people, the people must change. You cannot Maintain the culture of your former relationship in your new position. The Bible says you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin. Listen, my brothers and sisters, you cannot walk around negative people and make progress. You, you, and you need to be candid with yourself and realize you don't have eternity. Make the best out of what you have. Are you with me? If your friends are all negative. Run for your life. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Run for your life. The word of God puts a demand on your language and your relationship. Neno la mungu uweka demand kwa lugha yako na uhusiano wako. Biblia nasema watu awila waesi ambatana kama hakuna makubaliano. Listen friends, anybody you don't agree in language always becomes an obstacle to your progress. And don't be cheated. Words carry power. Let me say something on relationship. And I think it's a reputation. Whether you know it or not, every living human being carries a certain environment. I'm sure you know that by now. Kila mutu anapeba masingara fulani. Watu wa mungwe. Kama ulikuwa naomba mbaka ukakutana na rafiki. Story yenu sikuisi sio uduma, sio maombi, sio makusudi, sio biashara. Luga yenu sasa ni vile dunia inaisha. You have every stupid story about everybody. And I need to say this. I need to say this. The devil can send you a friend who is an agent against your purpose. Shetani anasa tuma mutu kwa maisha yako. Anauwa tamayako ya mungu. Anauwa tamayako ya ushirika. Mbaka unasikia haupendi tena kuolewa. You just hate marriage. And you begin to feel those who are not married are free. Those of us who are in prison, you begin to call your marriage prison. 
The devil can send somebody your way, you begin to hate work. Upendi to kasi. The devil can send somebody your way, you begin to hate yourself. Listen. Check every relationship from where you met. If it doesn't improve what you are doing, it is not of God. Some of you, God has called you. You carried grace. Like I said, some of you, you are covenanted to God. Either your parents did it, you did it, or your lineage has been um, marked by God. But the devil sends an agent. They are never positive about anything you do. Okay, so what you say? You know what I'm talking about? Listen, friend, it's that powerful. Demand on relationship. Abraham, get out of your home, your country, your kindred. Get out. The people who almost killed the ministry of Jesus were his people. The people who sold Joseph were his brothers. The people who wanted to kill the ministry of David were his brethren. The people who sent Chapter out of their home were his brothers. The people who betrayed Christ were his people. Relationship. What did I say? Relationship. The demand of the word of God must change your relationship and your language. Number two, or number wherever you are, there is a demand of season. There is a demand of season. We are talking about the five demands that guarantees human success or progress. Demand ya kwanza ni ile neno la mungu inaweka kwa. Na neno la mungu inalete demand ya kwamba lugha yako lasima yambatane na lugha ya mungu kama utapata jawapu ya mungu. Number two, kwamba demand ya neno la mungu ina demand husiano unawambatana. Na malu unayana. Jesus called his disciples from their friends. From their family. Are you here? Number two, I've said what? The demand of seasons. Write these three things that I think are very important. Every season comes with its own culture. This thing I forgot. Let me go back again. On the demand of relationship. I said every human being carries a certain environment. Whether you like it or not. Kuna mtu, asio kuna mtu, mtu yote muna kutana na ee. Kuna masingara fulani anabeba. Either ata kuambukisa ama utamuambukisa. Take it from me. Kila mtu anapepa masingara fulani. Ukikana mtu mwenye hapendi mungu. Na ukitaka kujua mtu hapendi mungu. Akisikia kitu kidogo kuhusu kanisa wa kristo. Yendi anatafutia amplifier. Why would you be a champion of what you pro pro profess? Look at me. If you can dress your life backwards, two, three years, you are no longer what you used to do. You are no longer who you used to be. And you can link to one thing, your relationship. Listen, friends. There are people who have nothing to lose. There are people who have nothing to lose. Are you with me? I am a pastor by calling. I will make sure my inner circle are people who have a calling. My BJJ, my Peter, James, and John, I, I, cannot, I cannot bring so close people who are doing, who are, who, who, who are politicians. My closest friends cannot be politicians. No. My closest friends cannot just be people who want to buy a house and build something. My, my closest friends must be people who enhance my dreams. So who are my inner circle? Pastors, preachers, and people who have ministry. 
Look at you. You say God has called you to change nations. Look at your associations. Look at your friends. You are now thinking village. You, you, you have even lost the joy of life. You are even negative about life. The things that you passionately pursued, nowadays you are very casual about this. No, no, this life. You, you, you've lost the environment. And listen, when they are through with you, they will move to the next. You are the only one suffering in that relationship because secretly, silently. Let me give you hints. The devil can send somebody your way when you're broke. They come with so to say help, but the mission is not to help you, it's to trap you. Let me give you an example. Somebody gave a pastor a car. Mutual repair pastor nini? Gari, kama sawadi. She done it over your mutual end of Kanisa. Nalisema. Yeye haamini kwa makanisa lakini anaamini kwa charity. Lakini church aendi anasema church kuna a lot of you lakini akampea huyo pasta gari. Huyo mtu angeita pasta hata katikati ya usiku. Huyo pasta angekuwa karibu na huyo mtu hawezi sema anything about salvation. As I'm talking to you right now. That man is no longer a pastor. Listen, before you make anybody a friend, find out. Today represent where I'm going to. The devil can, sell, can send help in a trap. Those of you who've read my book on trapping opportunities, sometimes it comes as help. The devil can trap you through a job. I'm telling you. Let's go to the next thing. Remember, everybody carries an environment. You either influence them or they do. And listen to me. In environments are infectious. I don't care how gifted you are, how passionate you are, your relationship. And listen, while the devil traps people with other things, some people he knows comfort is enough. And that's why you must be very careful with your relationship. If your friend is the one buying lunch every day, you know who has to stay. Sometimes refuse, yeah, I'll pay today. If your friend can join you where you are, you must always join them where they are. Check your relationship. Are you with me? Usha wai pigi wa simu na umu tansi Hey, uko wapi? Niko na mushane, uko wapi? Niko tafuta ni kupea mushane. Na unasema niko tosema tukunyo chai. Mushasia, mushasia. Everybody carries a certain. I don't want to be very negative, but listen, there are people who carry rejection and they have refused to confront the spirit of rejection. Anytime you come close to them, you feel people don't love you. All of a sudden, you begin to detest people, you don't like people, you become very sensitive because people carry rejection. There are people who are negative in life. They come close to you and before you know it, your language has changed. There are people who are suffering from issues. Can I, can, can I say one more? Yes, yes. There are people who carry an environment of losses. Hakuna kitu asha fanya ikafaulu. Kwa moyo wawa meamini, wawa wawesi faulu piyashara, wawesi faulu kwa kila kitu, na meamini. So they carry that environment. They come around you, and guess what? Your finances begin to develop wings. I wanted to say one, but this is church. There are people who are still struggling with curses. And they carry the environment. You do well until you begin to do business together. You do well until you invite them to your house. And some of you want to live like nothing happened. Look at where your life changed. Come on, go to your history books. Look where your finances changed. Look at where your spiritual life changed. Look at where your prayer life died. Look at where rejection began to develop. Look at where your attitude changed. It was a relationship. 
It was a relationship. In 1990, 92, 93, 94, I used to be in Ban Forest. I lived in Ban Forest. And there was this brother, we used to call him brother something. That man was negative about everything and everybody. The man was so learned, but he was so negative about everything. That man died of a condition that was caused by his personal infliction. Huyo mtu, he was a senior man in the Ministry of Agriculture. Huyo mtu alikuwa na pepo ya umaskini. Pepo. Huyo mtu hange nunua nyama. Huyo mtu hange kula kwa hoteli. Huyo mtu hange tumia pesa yake. Muke wake alimuaja kwa sababu ya nja. Huyo mtu alikuwa mchoyo. Huyo ndugu alikuwa na nguo. He was a senior man in the Ministry of Agriculture. Huyo mtu alikuwa na weka viraka longi. That brother would take offense. Mtu akitoa sadaka kiwango fulani kanisa. Ana muita ndugu na mwambia. How can you? Na alikuwa mzee wa kanisa. Yes. Ugonjwa ili uwa huyo mtu ilitokana na upungufu ya malasi nzuri. There are people who don't love themselves. Stay around them. If you want to know you suffer rejection, look at your attitude towards people. Mtu akikupita, anaonekana ana yako na maneno na mimi. Ukikuta watu wawili wanaongea, walikuwa naongea story sao. Ukifika hapo wakinyamasa is like, kwa nini umemnyamasa wakati nimefika? You know those kind of things. And then you form such people. Listen, when your ears become very sensitive to negativity, there's a problem. Let me tell you, if the devil succeeds to get you out of purpose, he will have the pleasure of killing you. And listen, my friends, it's not a miracle for you to be anti what you promoted initially. Okay, let's go to the next. Verse 6 says what? Verse 6. Then the spirit of the Lord will come upon you mightily. Before you do that, you realize God is changing him from looking for donkeys to meeting prophets who are prophesying. Because God's word makes a demand on you. Number two, seasons has demands. You can never enjoy benefit or harvest from a season if you don't match the demand of that season. Men of God, women of God, when God raises you in grace, when the season of your ministry change, the demand of that season change. Are you with me? When God raises you, some of the things that you used to have for pleasure become secondary. Then the spirit of the Lord will come upon you mightily and you will prophesy with them. Your language has changed. You will prophesy with them and you will be changed into another man. The demand of a new season is complete change. You can never impress a new season with the old you. Remember what I began saying? God can never use you in your current state. He has to change you. In fact, he told the disciples, as much as you are fishers, I want you to come and I will train you how to fish. Are you with me? Mungu aliambia Musa nini uko naye kwa mkono akasema ni fimbo. We ni nani Musa mimi ni mchungaji wa kondoo. Akaambia nataka uko mchungaji wa watu wangu lakini wewe sifanya na hiyo hali. As much as you are a shepherd that's why it's a lie to think because you are a professional man or you are something in the society God will use you in that form. He will change you. Are you with me? 
if you are a, if you are a high school teacher or you are a teacher naturally ukiingia kanisa na ume, umeokoka there is always a probability kwamba pastor atakwambia kwa sababu ni mwalimu fundisha bible study fundisha because unajua kutengeneza uh, lessons god doesn't use teachers he has to make teachers to become teachers listen god will never use you in your raw state because you will take credit there is nobody in the Bible God used them in their status. God doesn't use the president. He has to change him. God doesn't use the manager. Listen, you are not a servant of God in the marketplace. God has to change you to suit his purpose. Being a manager doesn't make, a manager who is a brother doesn't make you a pastor in that institution. You are a manager courtesy of your purpose. But there is another dimension. Every season comes with a demand. You want a financial breakthrough season? There is a demand for it. You know what our problem is? You, we want God to bless us where we are. Sikia watu wa Mungu. Misri penye wana wa Israeli walikuwa. Biblia inasema kwamba ilikuwa nchi safi. Nakumbuka wakati Joseph alipeana inchi arti alipoongelesha farao akasema ndugu zangu baba yangu amekuja. Wakapewa sehemu nzuri. But listen. God cannot adopt that place as canon. There is another canon. Listen. That's why people ask questions. How comes when I serve God, I have lost what I thought I had? Because God cannot use you as raw as you are. Kuna pesa mungu wa kupale kwako. Lasima asambaratisho nda kupea pesa. Iyo siyo poa. Musa, hiyo fimbo una uko nayo umechunga kondo nayo. Wewe zitumia kukomboa watu wangu. Tupa chini. Let me give it a new form. I have a prayer for three human beings that I know. That I know they have a call of God in their life. But in a certain way there is an association that I feel is distracting them. I have told the Lord to go ahead of them. And stop their donkeys from the direction they are taking. And soon your donkey will be telling you something. Then you say, throw it on. Oh, no, no. Go, go, go to the other side. <laughs> By the way, now that you've gone there, who is there? I, that, that must be Kim. That must be Kim. That cannot be Peter. <laughs> Let's go. Then he said, throw it on the ground. So Moses threw it on the ground and it became a living serpent like the royal symbol of a ground of Pharaoh and Moses ran from it. Now listen, the same thing in Musa alitembea nayo akichunga ngombe wakati mungu alibadilisha hali Musa alitoroka. God will never use what is familiar to you to do his purpose. Kuna vile mungu atatukupitishia mpaka hata we mwenyewe ukiona wewe. Unashangaa kama wewe ni wewe. Unajiuliza, huyu ni mimi? Vile nilikuwa napendanga kukula squeeze sina appetite. Vile nilikuwa anga kierere squeeze nimetulia. <laughs> you know kuna story. Niseme ya story mam. Kuna, kuna story kwa kina, kwa kina mam. Mam ni msaliwa wa wanne. Kwa watoto sita. Huyu, 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 huyu. Huyu mamu huyu. Alikuwa na chapwa na mama yake kwa makosa moja. Bere, 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 bere. Mama alikuwa na mudomo. Huyu. Haku iba sukari, haku anapigana, lakini mudomo. Usha unwane mtoto wageni wakikua. Kabla jasema, eh, hey, ya meingilia yake, ya meingisa yake. <laughs> Kuna nduku nilipeleka mission siku moja. Na alikuwa na hiyo shida. You know? Every time we talk, he has something to say to what we are saying. Huyu mamu, alikuwa na chapwa kunyamasa. Alikuwa, kwanza, jina yake haikuwa Susan. Hiyo, hiyo ma story me. Nitasema siku ngine. Mama hako na jina ngine. Nyumbani mama haitu Susan. Kuna jina ngine. Lakini ya idini Susan. Lakini wachana hiyo. Kwa sababu huyo mungine alikuwa bere bere. Sasa. Wakati alipatiswa. When she was baptized. Alipotoka kwa maji. Mudomo ikafunga. 
Because God has a new stockative people. He looks for tamaras. So Moses must be a stammerer so that God can open his mouth himself. Those of you who give, you realize God doesn't ask for your money. He gives you what he wants you to give. That's why people want to have budget. Because budget I lose your view. Listen. David would not serve God in his raw status. There is a demand of a season. Hmm? There is a demand of a season. Look, let's go back to first Samuel. The spirit of the Lord will come upon you mightily and you will prophesy with them without being taught. Listen, the other ones who are uh, students of the school of prophets. You know Elijah, the school of prophets. But this one just met them. Initially, he was a, a farmer looking for donkeys. But the demand of the season is that you must suit the season. Go to the next verse. You will be changed into another man. Say with me. You will be changed into another. Say it again. You will be changed into another man. Everybody say, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to Badoko na iluga. Unajua mimi? Unajua mimi? Mimi asira yangu iki. You know what I'm talking about? The original you. Unajua nini lifanya Musa asinge kana? Original ili kwa inachipuka. Asira. Kitu ili katasa Musa asienda kana ni asira. Asira inachochewa na discouragement. Angalia mutu yote mwanyago discourage. They exhibit discouragement with anger. Anger says, I, I will drop it. Musa litupa my way. Ambayo ilikuwa na pepa maisha ya watu. Kwa sababu ya nini? Asira. If you are suffering from Asira, you are under the influence of discouragement. And guess what? Moses missed Canaan. Kwa sababu ya his original status. Ile tabia ya kuwa watu misri. That's why God subjected men to fasting. To kill the original. Paul was Saul. He was taken to the wilderness for 40 days to kill the murderer. The zeal in him was driven by anger. Listen, you cannot serve God in your personality. Hey. Musa ali miss kanan kwa sababu ya nini? Alilala na mwanamke mka fulani. Alipa pesa ya mtu. Alifanya nini? Asira. Daudi alienda pinguni na alikuwa na shida ya wanawake. Musa ali miss kwa sababu ya asira. Look at how stupid that is. Anger is dangerous. What did I say? Where is it born? Discouragement. When you stop doing your assignment, you become angry. And then when anger matures, it becomes bitterness. When bitterness has matured, how do you know bitterness is mature? You criticize anything and anybody who seems to be doing well in where you failed. Yeah. Utajua na bitterness wakati watoto wako wanakukumbusha ukule na wewe ndio ulikuwa na wachapa wakule all critics criticize what they were assigned to do if you want to know where your mission is look at where your criticism goes to Mungu aliua Musa na akamsika mwenyewe Na kamuambia ingawa umefanya miujisa yote. Kuna mtu umefanya miujisa kwa baibu kama Musa. Hakuna. Kwanza akandika vitabu tano ya testament ya, 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 ya kale. Musa ndi aliandika Genesis. Musa ndi aliandika Exodus. Musa ndi aliandika uh, Leviticus. Musa ndi aliandika Numbers. Musa ndi aliandika Deuteronomy. Lakini hakuenda kanan. Kwa sababu ya asira. Mutu wa kale. 
Petro karibu wa Miss Neema kwa sababu ya huyo mtu wa kale. Kisu. Na tabia ya ku confront Yesu. Musa alikuwa na hasira mpaka alikemea Mungu. Musa alihubiria Mungu. Musa alithreaten Mungu akamwambia, "Toa jina langu kwa kitabu ya usima." Musa. Musa aliongelesha Mungu akamwambia, "Kwani mimi ndio nilisai watu?" Musa aliuliza Mungu hiyo swali. Am I the one who gave birth to these people? Wacha kunisumbua. Musa aliambia Mungu, "Mimi ndio nilisai watu." Musa. Nani? Musa. Musa aliambia Mungu, "Toa jina langu kwa kitabu ya usima, potelea mbali." Musa. Hebu fanye jirani yako hivi, weka hapa hivi. Angalia kiwango ya hasira iko aje. <laughs> Wengine wanu mnafikiri hasira ni ile ya kuua mtu. Wengine mmekasirika na maisha. How do you know you suffer from anger? You stop trying anything. You are annoyed. You are angry with life. Nimejaribu hii imekataa. Nimejaribu hii imekataa. Wacha ikae. Nimekuwa na relationship tano. Kwenda. Kwani lazima nimejaribu biashara. You are suffering from anger. You will never end at the promised land called marriage. <laughs> Naona kuna wa, ma, customers mahali. Listen. There is a demand of seasons. Moses must die. Moses must Elijah was taken to the mountain for death. Jesus went to die before he died. He died 40 you know people people wonder why Jesus was crucified graciously. He had already died. For 40 days he prayed and fasted. That's when he died. For Paul soul to become Paul the demand of the season is that the old you must die i want to recommend to you you can never enter a new season of grace with your old nature you must die somebody is asking how will i die you can choose to die deliberately or circumstances will kill you people will step on where you hurt until it's no longer hurt even if you change work you will find them there The agents of God will be found there. Mwanamke mmoja aliamisha mume wake kutoka kanisa fulani kwa sababu alisema hiyo kanisa imejaa wasichana ambao wanatamani mume wake. Wakamhamisha kwa kanisa nyingine. Mwaka mmoja na mwezi mmoja exactly kwa kanisa mpya. Mume alikuwa na mtoto na mwanamke mwingine. Penye inauma itakanyakwa mpaka upone hebu niulizie jirani yako ni wapi na uma sana <laughs> ukiona ongei kinonda iko fresh still bleeding nilikongwa pesa unajua nilitoka kwa umaskini na kwa sababu shetani alijua nilitoka kwa umaskini but i had an element of generosity i'm generous nikajiambia kitu ya kwanza sichukui atm because nikiwa nayo na mtu wako na shida nitatoa ya pili nikakataa kuingia kwa hii, hii online niliwacha hiyo story kwa sababu kitu naniambia usiambie ndugu yako huna na iko na wakati shetani alijua that is where i'm hurt kama kuna kitu nimeumiswa kwa dunia ni pesa. Eh, hey, pesa yangu yote ikirudi. <laughs> Naweza nunua hii Kenya ya Eldoret. <laughs> pesa yangu yote ikirudi. But you know what? I decided to heal. Whenever I give money, I don't give with an expectation. Irudi. And guess what? What you don't expect back comes back. Hebu nilisia jirani tena alafu tuombe. Muulize ni wapi inauma sana. Kama unachunga jina hapo ndio jina itakanyakwa. If you are protecting your image, guess what? Your friends will betray you. 
Every season demands that you die to your old nature. Am I slow enough? Listen, Paul must go through a process where Saul dies. I go back to a statement. God will frustrate anything that doesn't fit the next season. Let me tell you a painful truth. Let me tell you a painful truth. God is a jealous God. Is what? If he has he has marked you for a purpose, he will manage the process. And there are things you will pray against, but they will still happen. The only way to stop them is to die. Last statement, let's say with me. Every season, Every season demands, demands death. To your old nature. nature. Period. So there's a demand of the word of God. And there's a demand of season. So how many of you are ready for a new season in God? How many of you are ready for a new season? Untaka season ya nini kwanza? Ya kupata mapawa. Hey, what season are you expecting? Breakthrough. Open doors. Listen. The only way you can enter into a new season is through the cross. You must die to what was to impress what is coming. There is a demand of a new season. There is a demand of a new season. Watu wa Mungu ukiona unafanya vitu yenye watu wanafanya na upati results yenye wanapata kuna kitu you do everything that everybody does but you don't get their results there is something the old david cannot kill Goliath huh? the old moses cannot confront pharaoh hello the old Abraham cannot have a baby. The old Simon cannot match what Peter would do. What was the secret of Joseph's success? The Bible says he never took offense. Nelson Mandela said, the reason why I must let go is because you can walk out of prison and walk on the streets as a prisoner. There is no weapon in the hands of the enemy than the weapon of offense. It's deadly. You can't repent it, you must confront it. You can't wish it away, you must confront it. You don't even pray for it. You confront it. We are blessed today. Lord, with our giving today, we acknowledge the demand of a new season. The demand of a new season is death to our old nature. I pray that each one of us will consider the demand of a new season. Death to the old us. I pray that we'll make a resolution. If it is not working, if it has not been working, we will let it die off. We will bury it. Like we received Christ and became new creation. May we have a new nature for a new season. And so with our giving today, we are blessed. We are favored of you. Our afternoon is secured in grace. In Jesus' name. And the church say, Amen. Let's appreciate the Lord for his faithfulness. Amen. I pray that you consider these words on your way out. We'll see you tomorrow. You can drop your offering. When I am saved.
आई आपसे क्यू ऑफ माई